Hi, uh, my name is Ben Chin. I'm a community organizer with Maine People's Alliance. Um, we are a statewide community action group with 32,000 members in every county of the state. Um, we work on a wide variety of issues, from health care to affordable housing um, to toxic use reduction. And it has come to our attention, as it has to many of you, that international free trade agreements and the World Trade Organization have provisions that give investors in other countries the right to challenge our laws and policies. We do recognize um, that it affects all of our issues because all of them, and the Kids Safe Product Law, LD2048, is a very good example of a law that could be challenged. So we ask uh, you to ensure that the decisions about our natural resources are made here in Maine, not in undemocratic international trade tribunals. We support um, the removal of water in all states from international trade agreements, so it should not be part of international trade agreements. Please take this opportunity and urge um, the Natural Resources Committee to act to preserve our democracy so that Maine will not be added to the list of states facing challenge under international trade rules. Good evening. My name is Bonnie Preston. I'm with the Alliance for Democracy. I will address the WTO General Agreement on Trade in Services, specifically Article 6 on domestic regulation. This is one of the most far-reaching provisions in international trade agreements as they impinge on local and state authority. Even if domestic regulations do not discriminate against foreign service providers and apply equally to all WTO uh, member countries, they can still be judged WTO illegal under this provision, which has to do with making sure domestic measure measures are not unduly burdensome to service providers. It is important to note that even though the EU has agreed that water services should not be included in the schedule from which countries make commitments, this only applies to national treatment and market access provisions, not to domestic regulation. Let me read you some of the language from GATS Article 6, Section 4 um, on this issue. Uh, one, the goal is to ensure that measures relating to qualification requirements and procedures, technical standards, and licensing requirements do not constitute unnecessary barriers to trade and services. Um, and second, domestic uh, disciplines shall aim to ensure that such requirements are not more burdensome than necessary to ensure the quality of the service. How does this apply to water? To give one example, if Maine were to require that water utilities adopt a rate structure that ensures that all customers, no matter how poor, can afford enough water to make, meet basic human needs, this regulation could be judged unnecessarily trade restrictive. An international trade tribunal would decide, not the elected leaders of Maine. Another example, Maine could establish technical standards having to do with the amount of water which could be withdrawn from the ground. Will these be judged more burdensome than necessary to the bottled water industry? Again, Maine does not get to decide. An international body should not be privileged to decide which Maine laws and regulations are unduly burdensome on service providers and which are not. The United States has long opposed that a necessity test standard be added to Article uh, 6, Section 4 as a way of predetermining what kinds of standards would or would not be considered unduly burdensome. The European Union now agrees. The AFD recommends that Maine support the USTR in affirming that no new disciplines are necessary for Article 6. Uh, the question on the board says uh, whether or not Maine's groundwater <coughs> laws and powers could be compromised by international trade agreements and how to mitigate. Uh, well, <coughs> compromise will only happen if the legislature acquiesces to foreign demands. Uh, there will definitely be challenges. So the message that I have for the legislature is that uh, means water resources should be governed by the people of the state and water regulations should not be subject to compromise by a foreign investor under international free trade agreements. So, thank you. Good evening, my name is Daphne Loring. I'm coordinator of the Maine Fair Trade Campaign and tonight I'm speaking on behalf of the 55 member organizations that make up our coalition. Trade agreements such as NAFTA, CAFTA, and the GATS present severe and worrisome risks for Maine and our communities to manage natural resources, specifically water. Investment provisions hack away at our sovereignty and democracy while opening the floodgates to unchecked, unregulated foreign corporations. 
In fact, we've seen such provisions handcuffing state legislatures and preventing important health, safety, and environmental laws from moving forward. This is extraordinary, little talked about, and must be changed. Foreign corporations are using provisions and trade agreements to circumvent, dismantle, or prevent local policies that while may be in the best interest of the citizens, <coughs> interfere with the company's potential profits. And I'd like to share with you tonight a story um, that those of us at MFTC have encountered over the last year. Uh, last November, a delegation from the Maine Fair Trade Campaign went down to Bangor's sister city in Carrasque, El Salvador. And uh, Carrasque, as well as several other communities uh, in El Salvador, are currently um, targeted by a number of mining corporations to exploit gold in their communities. And while there's widespread opposition to the proposed strip mining projects, due to the um, likely, um, due to the health and water uh, impacts from this mining, um, the corporations seem to be relentless in their pursuit to extract the resource. And ultimately, the national government did not grant the necessary permits to the mining company Pacific Rim <coughs> last spring. And yet, Pacific Rim continues, and instead of uh, just stopping, <laughs> They have gone uh, to the international trade tribunals and are challenging uh, El Salvador under the Chapter 10 uh, provision of CAFTA. And uh, Pacific Rim is actually a Canadian mining corporation, which is not, uh, Canada is not part of, of CAFTA, as Sarah mentioned. However, they set up a subsidiary in Reno, Nevada, and now are using that address to challenge uh, El Salvador for not give, granting them the appropriate permits to move forward with their strip mining. This is an action that is increasingly common among large corporations, and as long as these investment provisions are in our trade agreements, we will be vulnerable to such challenges in Maine. I can't help but to draw the connections between Maine's wealth of water, arguably the most precious natural resource in the world, and El Salvador's gold. Couple that with the reality that the access to clean drinking water is increasingly scarce around the world means resources only going to become more coveted in coming years. It is only prudent to anticipate and position ourselves for the coming decades. Maine's ability to manage groundwater extraction must not be compromised. There is no reason that foreign tribunals, such as the one considering the Pacific Rim case, should be making determinations on Maine policies around groundwater and groundwater extraction. Well, and now, the Maine Fair Trade Campaign believes uh, makes the following recommendations in this array of them. We call the Maine Legislature to pass a resolution calling for a complete carve out of water from all free trade and investment agreements, specifically the GAS, GAPS. In addition, Maine should pursue a high level of investor investment disclosure so municipalities in the state know which international trade agreements could apply before signing that contract. And finally, our state should require that any conflict between a foreign corporation and the state be heard in domestic courts, not a foreign tribunal. Large corporations are trying to undermine local decision making. This is intentional, and they are leveraging extraordinary rules and power that have been granted to them under these trade agreements. This needs to change, and this must not happen to Maine. It is our responsibility to recognize this problem and make the changes necessary to protect our local control protect Maine's sovereignty and to ensure we have the ability to manage our natural resources in the future. I'm an advocate for democracy, for private property, and for fair trade. The private property that I'm concerned with is that of the greater number of citizens of the state of Maine as they find themselves in a contest with the corporate person of a multinational. The democracy that I'm concerned with is that of the municipalities that comprise the state of Maine. I support what happened in the municipalities of Newfield and Shaplin, where Mainers have assumed the power under their constitution to say to multinational corporations, you have a privilege granted to you in personhood and rights to the protections of the constitution but you cannot use them in our municipalities to undermine the ordinances democratically established by the people of these municipalities. <coughs> the former Attorney General warned us in a letter to our congressional delegation 
that international tribunals and global trade agreements threaten our own democracy. There was a case uh, cited by the Attorney General's office, Lucas versus South Carolina uh, Coastal Council. And, and in this case, it was stated that if the regulatory field is established, those seeking to do business must understand that there may be subsequent regulations that affect the way they do business. I suggest that you consider the rights-based ordinance established in Shapley and Newfield and let other municipalities in the state of Maine adopt such ordinances so that we can level the playing field so that multinationals coming to the state of Maine know that this community does not want to do business with us.